Google's six-year struggle to create the world's biggest digital book library hits a wall. A U.S. federal judge said the deal would be unfair to authors with his take on what happens next. I'm joined right now by Nick Thompson. He is senior editor at The New Yorker magazine. He is also a Bloomberg TV contributing editor. Nick, thanks so much for coming in. Co-founder Larry Page has been talking about this digital book library since 1998, right? Just how big of a miss is this? How big of a setback is this decision for Google? It's a pretty big setback. I mean, they've been taking books out of libraries, scanning them, making digital copies. They've done something like, who knows, 10 million books. They had this great deal with publishers and authors that was hugely advantageous to Google. They had this, what looked like an opening to set up a massive market. And now not only is the proposed deal scuttled, the ruling also raises all sorts of questions that aren't good for Google's future. Well, I'm glad you brought up that point. I'm going to read one of the quotes here from, from the judge. It seems like there was some pretty heavy anti-monopoly language, right, in this settlement decision. Google would get control over the search market for books, and that was one of the reasons why it was rejected, right? This right. monopoly power idea. Right. So Amazon and Microsoft are two of, the, uh, two of the people who sent in briefs against the deal. What the deal would have done is it said, okay, uh, for, First thing that happened is Google scanned all these books. People raised these legal questions, said, you can't scan these books. You know, we have copyright over these books. Google then met with the publishers and the authors and they said, you know what, let's kick the legal question aside and let's just create this whole new deal where Google will create a massive bookstore where they will, among other things, sell books where there are copyrights on the books, um, but they're out of print. So Google was gonna create this massive bookstore of books that you can't get in bookstores. And the deal said, Google gets to do that, but then it kicks all this money to the publishers and the authors. Now, what it also said, though, was Google sort of has rights that nobody else has. There's a whole class of books called Which is a little bit of a precedent, a dangerous precedent for Google, right? Well, to it, have that stated by a judge. Right. It's a, it's, a doubly dangerous, it's a doubly dangerous precedent because what it says is, what it said is not only is this bad because it gives them monopoly power, the judge also said, this is particularly bad because it's Google, which has all this power over search already. So what the judge was implying, though he didn't say this directly in the ruling, was had another company done this, I would have looked at it a different way. So it's a very bad precedent for Google. All right, now what are the chances that Google becomes less stubborn, right? Because yesterday apparently Google implied we're not going to do anything different. We're not going to revise the settlement. This is what it is. What are the chances, knowing the company as you do, that maybe they'll backpedal a little bit and adjust uh, perhaps some of the clauses that may make the judge or not change his mind? I mean, 100%. Uh, the, are the odds of the, what the judge said is the principle is right now the principle was opt out. Here's this huge settlement. If you're a, if you wrote a book and you have copyright over it, you can leave the settlement. You can leave the agreement. The judge said, well, that's kind of preposterous because no one will figure out how to do that. You can revise it and make it opt in. So that the fault is if you're a copyright holder, you're not part of it. But if you want to be, you can be part of it. Now, Google, in the initial... So basically, authors have to agree to participate. That's the right. point. As opposed to ask to be let out of it. So completely reverse the burden of proof, which will totally change yeah, the way it works. Yeah, change everything. And, well, this brings up a point. I mean, authors, I have to assume, maybe are disappointed by this ruling. Readers certainly are, right? Because we want all the books that we want all the time in an easy-to-find space. What about publishers? Publishers are disappointed too. I mean, the publishers, what was interesting about this is that the publishers liked it, the authors liked it, and Google liked it. There were a whole bunch of people who didn't like it, right? There, Google's competitors didn't like it because they thought it would disadvantage them. And actually, a whole bunch of public interest advocates didn't like it because they thought it gave too much power to Google. And they thought, actually, all these books should sort of just be put in the, you know, put in the public domain and there should be more, more access to orphan works and to other works. So uh, the publishers are disappointed by the ruling, the authors are disappointed by the ruling, Google is disappointed by the ruling. Nick, thanks so much for coming, but we do know you can still read Shakespeare, right, on Google if you want. He's one of the authors. That you can read is... anything where the copyright has expired. So basically before the 1920s, anything that's written, you can right. still get it on Google. It's good to know uh, for all those literary fans out there. Nick, thanks so much. Nick Thompson joining us there, a senior editor at The New Yorker magazine, also a Bloomberg contributing editor.